Praise Woo. God. I just, if we're people of God, we should praise him. Yes. Yes. I'm thankful today that, uh, that I'm able to praise God. Yes. Amen. It's a good thing to be uh, among God's people and to, I was thinking the other day, I said, you know, I had not even said anything in church since March. The last service we was in before this pandemic, uh, the last time I even spoke in this church, and I thought, you know, that's been a long time. But anyway, God is good. He's been good to me, and I'm thankful today that we are able to be here, to be gathered among God's people and to know that whatever state we're in, whatever the condition is, then we always can look to him and uh, have our confidence and our trust in God. You know, no, regardless, you know, we can, sometimes you, you hate to turn on news and stuff because it seems like, it seems like it's all bad. But in spite of that, it's still good that we can uh, have something to lean on. We can lean on our God, and uh, I get, comf get uh, strength in just reading his word and see that, you know, I, I was looking at Jesus was uh, the first miracle that he did in in Cana, and uh, his mom asked him, told him that they were out of wine, and uh, he, you know, he kind of spoke to me, just from my point of view, you know, that he said, "Woman, what, what, I, what do I have to do to, with thee?" And then uh, I thought, "Man, that's kind of tough." But anyway, uh, uh, he uh, <clears throat> he said that my hour is not yet come. And I was thinking about what Brother Smith was talking, you know, about time. You know, he, he I, I don't know, was, I don't think he was talking just about the, the uh, crucifixion when he said his hour is not yet come. I'm thinking he had a time that he worked in. There was a time frame that, uh, that uh, he was aware of, you know, that that's what, we, what Brother Smith is working on with us, you know, that God has a time frame that he's working in. And I was looking at a uh, strip or two or park talking about the fullness of time and the fullness of the Gentiles. You know, there is a time frame that, that we are to work in and, and with God. You know, it's not just us, our time frame, but God has a time frame that, that he's working in. My, my, my part of that is that I have to stay connected with God. You know, he got his time frame that he's working things out in, and, uh, but I have to stay with him, you know. Yeah. Even if I, if I knew what his time frame is, I, I have to still work with God. Right. And that's what I believe Brother Smith is encouraging us this morning to, uh, 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 you know, look at God from, you know. I, I remember when I uh, got out of the military, I... Uh, uh, we didn't. I didn't own in the car. My my family. We were poor people. We didn't own anything. But anyway, uh, I bought a car when I got out of the military, and, <clears throat> and I got to working here in Little Rock with some guys and talking about you know what kind of oil you're supposed to use and all that. And <clears throat> everybody everybody would say use pins oil, use Quaker State, use this. But you know I started thinking, you know, this is my car. You know I don't. I can I can go with what they're saying, you know, but I need to know. You myself, you know, since this is my car, I don't have to just call he said Penn State, that's what I need to use. Or just because he said Quaker State, I need to use. But uh Pennzoil, I said Penn. But anyway, um, so I figured out I'm gonna have to make this decision on what kind of oil I'm gonna use in this car. You know, I appreciate their in information that they're giving me, but I got to make this decision. You know, I got to decide what am I going to do. But anyway, uh, I, I don't know. I think I might have used Penzo. I can't remember, but but it's been a long time ago. But anyway, uh, but I'm just saying, you know, we, we have to decide for what we're going to do. You know, God's already got his plan, what he want to do, but how am I going to fit in it? You know, it's up to me to decide what am I going to do. What, what, what about you? You know, that's what the... Jesus was preaching, and it got kind of rough, and they were saying, uh, everybody was leaving. Said, eat my flesh or drink my, my was blood. You have no life in you. And they had started leaving. And then his disciples asked him, what, uh, you know, 
what's going to happen? <laughs> what are we going to do? Are you going to, he asked them, what are, are you going to leave also? But they said that, where else were we going? You know, you're the only one that have eternal life. You're, you're the one that uh, have uh, the, the life that we're looking for. And uh, we can't go anywhere else. So anyway, uh, we have to make a decision. That's what I'm, it's, it's a lifetime decision. You know, sometimes you think, well, like this pandemic thing, you know, you like to see it be over with t- tomorrow. But it may not. Suppose it lasts a year or so, you know. It's, it's not up to me. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, sometimes this, this life working with God, sometimes it, you know, you think, well, I like to get in in condition here with God to where I guess I want to coast or something. But you know, we're not gonna be able to coast in this. That's what I'm that's what I'm finding out. You can always have opposition. But always be something that's gonna be causing you to realize you need to get closer to God. That's what I'm seeing, is that it's gonna always be something going on to 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 make you feel like, look, like I need to get closer to God. That's what I need to do. I need to have more time. Consider God in all of these things, and that's what I'm trying to do. I, I get concerned about things, and, I, and a lot of it I can't do a thing about. But I do get concerned about it, and, but I know it's up to God. If, I, if God, if, if, if he don't help me, you know, if he doesn't help us, then we're not going to make it anyway. So that's what I want to do is try to, uh, align my life as best to act that I can with God. And uh, <clears throat> Jesus, you know, I might not be able to say it like he did. You know, he said he, he came here to uh, not do his own will, but to please him that sent him. And uh, that's, that's a big statement. But in a way that uh, we have to somehow, you know, all that is within us to be able to measure up to the things that God is showing us, you know, that he's showing, showing us light. He's showing us light on, 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 on this world. Yeah, I was thinking you can, you can hear all kind of voices in the world, you know, people are saying this, and so I'm saying that. But, you know, God is going to help us. He, he is helping us and letting us see, you know, it's light that we can see, just see what God is showing us. You know, he's showing us. That's a song we sang that, Keep showing me the way. Lord, keep showing me the way. You know, and that's what we have to do. We, if, if we know, if we see this and know it, then uh, although it's difficult, you know, sometimes life gets difficult. But if you know and see and understand that this is where it's going to have to be and you're going to have to trust God in it, then... Uh, and you just have to buckle down and do it. You know, we're just going to have to do it. We're going to have to be able to uh, put God in it. You know, God, this is your world. God created everything. Even myself, you know, you, you can get sometimes maybe feel boastful or feel proud or feel like, you know, you've done accomplished a lot. But, but after all, you know, I, I didn't even bring myself. I didn't, I didn't create myself. I didn't even have nothing to do with that. But I am here, though. And then while I am here, then I want to make the best of it. That's what I want to do. I want to make the best of it. Since I'm here, I didn't bring myself here. I didn't, I didn't uh, make it happen, but I am here. And, I, and you know, over, uh, somehow in, in life, you know, you get to see a, a lot of things and a lot of, a lot of things, some things that you don't understand. You know, people you don't understand. But anyway... And when I, when I run into that, I just have to just say, God, you know, you know. And, uh, and, I, and eventually he let us see some things, and we, then we know. You know, when you know uh, <clears throat> what, uh, what lies ahead, that's what all of the preaching and all of the teaching that we hear to help us to see what lies ahead for us and what's... Uh, uh, what our pathway is, what we're, where we're headed, you know. And sometimes the way get weary. And sometimes it gets uh, to where you, you don't understand, but still he's showing us. 
And I want to be patient enough to be able to wait on God, to uh, be able to, you know, be humble enough. That's what Brother Smith was saying about being humble enough to be able to seek God. God, show me. Help me, Lord. And when I seem to run out of strength, God, give me strength. Oh, God, help me. And that's, that's my prayer, you know, that uh, we have to be able to lean on God. And I, and I appreciate even being here, you know, I, I, I know a lot of some places I, I got relatives, you know, they, I don't know if I, I was talking to one of my younger sisters, and I don't know if they've been to church since this pandemic. It's been so bad on them. But we've been blessed, and I know we don't want to be careless, though, in the things of God. We want to do what it, we, we got people out there that tell us what, how to deal with this situation, and we just have to be careful and do all we can. Do what's in, within our power to be able to exist in, in this situation that we're in. And, uh, you know, but we're blessed. We are blessed people. And I'm just thankful today. I'm just thankful that we can come here, lift our voices, and praise unto God. Oh, I'm so thankful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I'm just, it's just good to be here. Good to be in the house of the Lord. All right, we're going <clears> to... <throat> We're going to do an offering today, and, and uh, just pray for God's people. There are people that have needs. We all, like I said, we all need to keep our eyes on the Lord. Eyes, keep your eyes on Jesus. And uh, so let's pray for people. Uh, if they lose sight, sometimes they might lose sight of what they should be saying, what they should be uh, putting their emphasis on. You know, I, I get up sometime, I tell my wife, I said, look, I hadn't read my scripture today. I, <clears throat> I want to have a daily activity that I do, you know, I don't want to leave God out. You know, I want to have things that I do daily, you know. This is a daily walk with God. You know, it's not, tomorrow is not promised to us. If you have today, then then you have it, and you make the best of it. And uh, <clears throat> that's what I want to do is daily, you know, have uh, things that I want to uh, talk to the Lord and, and uh, have that, that, uh, that, that it's not for anybody, it's to God, I'm talking to God. So anyway, let's uh, remember our needs here today. And I don't know all, I know we pray for the, the Weaver, Brother uh, Shelby and Ray and Susie, I don't know. I don't. Brother Ron Johnson is the one that's. Is my mic not working? Is it on? Um, he's the one that's been keeping me okay. abreast because you can't contact anybody, and and the, the brother Ron Johnson is the one that brother Weaver okay. uh, told the hospital if any decisions had to be made, it'd be through him. So the chaplain called him the other day and told him that the doctor would probably be calling him mm. that day or the next day about turning the vent off because they just don't feel like brother there's any hope for Brother Shelby. Okay. Of course, Brother Shelby did leave the instructions to Brother Ron, I don't want turned off. Okay. <laughs> so Brother Ron said that's the only it, that's the only thing information I can give y'all. I'm not going to, I'm telling you not to turn him off for what he said not to do. I haven't heard any further, so I don't okay. know if he's improving or where his, what his condition is, but I know he needs our prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, he does have uh, coronavirus, but he, he didn't first mm -hmm. go into the hospital with that. He went in with uh, other need, pneumonia mainly, and, and he went home and then he went back and then he tested positive for it, but he really has the same sickness he had, but he is positive for corona, which mm -hmm. certainly is not a help in this situation. Mm -hmm. But he certainly does need our prayers. And of course, brother, brother Ray and sister Susan, of course, still needs our prayers. Uh, Caleb and Hannah are out today, but they're 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 not they they're just on a little trip. Okay. So her aunt got married. Benton Belton mm -hmm. last night and so they 
they met their family on, on the way up there and spent a little time with them. But anyway, um, let's see, who else? The, the, the McPhees we need to keep praying for, huh? Is, is that who you mentioned? Sister McGowan. Yeah, Sister McGowan. Brother McGowan, of course, is home with her, but she she's still recovering from her surgery, and so we need to keep her in prayer. And uh, I mentioned the Mac Fees family. Keep praying for the Dominican Republic. It's, they've got several needs over there. They're yeah. still they're back on shutdown. For they can't go out of their house after seven o'clock at night. Right. They're found on the street. They pick them up and throw them in jail. <laughs> they're pretty particular about it, and so. Mm -hmm. and I was to have a Zoom meeting with them. I've been having it on Friday nights, but they had a complete blackout, so we had mm -hmm. to cancel that last night, so or Friday night. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. then Sister Cindy's mom, I know we've been praying for her. I'm sure she still needs our prayers. And did they put her on a fibrillator, Sister Cindy? for her kids too because they're having to try to make some decisions about how to care for her you know and so mm -hmm. I know they'd appreciate our prayers all right I know there's other needs all right uh, I know the Haitian people still uh, grieving brother pre so remember them over there in Haiti uh, anyone else have any Brother Stan, okay. Remember Brother Stan. Sister Gail. All right, remember that. Okay, all right. Sister Donna. All right. All right, Sister Painter. Okay. All right. All right, let's all remember that. Anybody else? Uh, Sister Ann, I'm sorry. Sister, okay, all right. All right. She coded this past week, having an operation on her hand, but okay. uh, they had her in intensive care. I haven't heard anything how she's doing. Do you have any report on Brother Ken Jacoby? If they're still trying to wean him off of the life support? not doing good I know that mm -hmm. unless it's mm -hmm. been a turn so he certainly right. needs our prayer um, thank you for Remember mentioning that. him I forgot to mention him anyone else <laughs> oh, that's okay, that's okay. alright I guess the usher will come we'll get ready to do an offering so let's everybody stand and we'll uh, ask that God will help his people touch these needs here today Lord we want to Remember your people, Lord. Oh, God, we know that you can help our every need. Blessed be your holy name, oh, God, today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus.
I just wanted to mention that uh, it's good to have Brother Jordan with us today, Eshan. Uh, Brother Jordan, we're glad you're here. And then uh, Brother Zach, Sister Dodge's grandson. Man, he's getting big. These boys are all growing up. They sure are. Anyway, we're sure glad that they're here today. Praise God. All right, let the Lord lead you. thank the Lord for being here today. I think these songs, they provoke me to get up. That's what they do. <laughs> because I am blessed, and I have been blessed. Hallelujah. I magnify the Lord today. Mm. Uh, I praise God today. I praise him today. You can't count. You know, the blessing. I thought about that song uh, yesterday. Count your many blessings and name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God has done. I wouldn't have enough time in the day, the next day, months. Yeah. <laughs> Not even in a year. <laughs> I don't have enough to tell you all the blessings, the mercies, hallelujah. Who your God has bestowed upon me. Hallelujah. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all you can tell him is thank you. Just tell him thank you because he's good. Hallelujah. He's good. He is good. He is good. He's good. <laughs> I'm grateful to him. I'm grateful to the Lord for each day that he wakes me up. And he said he gives me brand new mercies. Hallelujah. He gives me brand new mercy. Hallelujah. It's not because I've been good. It's not because I've always done it right. Hallelujah. It's not because I'm doing so right right now. But because of his mercies, he loves me. He gave me new mercies to start over again, to get things right. I thank God for those. I said, Lord, each day is a new day. It really is a new day. Sometimes I go out and sit on my porch in the morning early morning in the clouds it may be an overcast and then some days I get up the sun may be out then there's times when there's a few clouds in the sky I say those are new days the day today is not gonna be like yesterday it wasn't like yesterday and I praise God for each day that he's given me I'm gonna learn how to appreciate God I'm gonna learn how to thank God for everything hallelujah I praise him for waking me up in the morning and giving me breath to breathe. Hallelujah. I can breathe. It's because of God. It's because of him. He tells me, Nona, get up. Nona, wake up. Breathe. Move. You know, so it's him. It's not me, but it's the goodness of God. It's his mercies. Hallelujah. And I praise him. I magnify him. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful.
I'm thankful to be here today. and appreciated uh, the songs that we've started out with. and The spirit I feel here today, uh, I'm thankful for this order that we have, and uh, I'm thankful for the day we live in. Uh, we, we do find ourselves in, in frustrating circumstances, and, and like Brother Tally said, we, we just want it to be over with. Um, you know, and it, it doesn't appear that that's going to happen anytime soon, does it? Uh, in fact, um, I say that, but I, the business that I'm in, we, we make equipment that's used for sanitation. And uh, up until recently, it's been mostly used for food processing and, and uh, animal health and pharmacy. But, we, but with COVID, our equipment has been used extensively for sanitizing public transportation and, and uh, hospitals and schools and a lot of different, the list goes on. It, it's, been, it's been a dead run since February for me and, and the company that I work for. In fact, I've been, I've worked for them. I tell uh, the man I work for, his name's Drew, I tell him, I said, I've worked for you longer than anybody I've ever worked for, except for my, uh, for my mama, and I'm still working for her. I could say that about Gladys, but I'm more working with Gladys than I am for, so we, we're, we'll be married 25 years in October. And uh, the Bible says uh, that how can two walk together except they first agree? And you know, you have to make a decision in your mind that you're going to walk with somebody. you got to agree to do that. And it, you can't settle your differences apart. Let me say that again. You can't settle your differences apart. You have to be willing to walk together. And uh, that's why the Bible says, Come, let us reason together. Even God is willing to walk with you. He proved that with Adam. He walked with him in the cool of the day. He was willing to submit, not submit, but to, to Jesus. He, con he came down as a, in, in the form of a man to understand us, to be able to work with us, to comprehend what we're going through. And, you know, if, if the Lord is willing to do that for you, are you willing to do that for him? I want to be. I want to get my heart in a condition where I can say, Lord, here am I, and uh, be still uh, long enough to listen, to hear the voice of the Lord. And thank thankfully, we have the Holy Ghost. Isn't it great that we have the Spirit of God where the Lord can talk to us? The Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. And he speaketh things that cannot be understood. But God understands, saints. He understands the, the cry of your heart today. In fact, there's not anything that he doesn't know. The Bible says that he knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. So make up your mind that you're going to walk with him and that you're going to walk with his people. Just settle it in your heart today. Praise God. That I'm, uh, you know, like uh, Ruth said to Naomi, that where you go, I go. Where your people are, my people are. Uh, don't ask me to leave you, but let me go with you. Hallelujah. And so, I'm thankful today that, that uh, you know, for this day we're living in, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of COVID. <laughs> I promise you that. We, we have sold a lot of equipment, and, and uh, our inventory has turned multiple times, and, and I'm the buyer. So, I've got a lot, uh, I've got a heavy burden I've carried for the last several months, and, and, and then I'm just tired of the drama that, you know, goes with it. All the uncertainty, and, and uh, am I exposed, am I not exposed, did I know somebody who got exposed, you know, and it just, there's so much confusion and frustration that, and you almost, you know, you almost feel like a leper at times uh, with people looking at you sideways and the thoughts, you know, that go through their minds, and and then even when my mom was in the hospital, it was, it, you know, she could only have one visitor. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that she could have that visitor. In fact, when the nursing home called me, they said, where do you want us to take her? I said, I want her to go to uh, uh, whatever this, 
um, Catholic hospital is over here, um, St. Vincent, thank you. Uh, I said, I want her to go over there because they'll let me visit her. They'll let, receive one visitor a day. Brother Kyle here, he was in a hospital uh, from a complication, and they wouldn't allow. The Sisters of Mercy weren't very merciful <laughs> in that hospital. They wouldn't allow any visitors, not even his mama, not even his dad, not even a preacher, nobody. And so we find ourselves in such an unusual time, and I was reading this week uh, about the Christians in Nevada, and hear that their churches have been shut down to where they can't, they're limited to 50 people, no more than 50 people. But you go right around the corner, and there's a casino, and they're not limited to a quantity, they're limited to a percent. They can have half of their uh, capability, their capacity. And so these Christians in Nevada, they just went to a casino, rented a room, and had church. <laughs> How about that? You know, and so we live in an unusual time, don't we? I've seen in Pennsylvania where a group of people couldn't gather together in their church, so they just went down to the local Walmart and had church. My Lord. So this time that we're in, it's, it's kind of it's pushed us out of our comfort zones. It's made us... Uh, you know, frustrated, it's tested our spirits, it's, it's revealed to us some of the things that, that uh, we have, you know, uh, boy, you wouldn't think about certain people being rebellious, but they can be. You wouldn't even think, you know, I think about myself, I'm, for the most part, pretty compliant with the law, except maybe when I'm speeding, <laughs> going too fast, or... But boy, there's times like, well, who do they think they are? And I was, we were on our way to church this morning, and I guess the Lord's dealing with me about order, and, and I'm, I'm glad I like the subject of order because it helps, it helps keep me in line, Brother Al. When I can, uh, you know, Brother Al, he said, he said, I have to behave, everybody's watching. And, but, you know, there's, there's times when no one's watching but order. God's watching. There used to be an old, old chorus. There's an all-seeing eye watching you, watching you. And uh, God sees everything. And so I was visiting with my family on the way in this morning, and I said, you know, I said, there's, there's certain people today, there's, a, there's, a, there's many people. It's not just a handful, and God help me if I'm not... I don't fall in that same category, that can't adjust to current leadership. And uh, so it's always a resist. There's always a resistment. Resistment. There's always a rebellion. There's always a pushback. There's always a, a no, I don't want to. There's always this, this uh, challenge of authority. And uh, when we find ourselves in a condition where we, we can't adjust to certain leadership, it won't be long that the leadership will maybe change a direction or, or move in a different way, and then we're standing here by ourselves. Why? Because we didn't adjust to leadership. And I was thinking, I've, I've recently been looking back through the Old Testament, uh, and I, was, I came back across Korah, Dathan, and, and Abiram, and uh, they didn't adjust to leadership. You know, and, and I got to thinking about the children of Israel. They're, they're in Egypt, right? They're in bondage. They don't like it. No one likes it. In fact, they're tired of it. They're, they're enslaved to it, right? And they're wanting out of it. And, uh, you know, they went through all the plagues and, and everything that, that uh, they had to go through. And uh, the, um, I'm just going to read through these plagues with you. Just want to number them off. The, the first one uh, was water to blood. And then the next one was frogs and then lice. And then flies and pestilence of livestock and boils. Thunderstorms of hell, locusts. That, there's no mention in any of these plagues of a coronavirus, by the way. Uh, darkness for three days and then, of course, death of the firstborn. 
And you know, every time that Moses went up and visited with Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, okay, Moses, after a plague, he said, okay, Moses, you're out of here. Y'all are leaving. Get out of here. I wonder how many times Moses went back to his people and said, all right, it's time, we're leaving. Get ready. Pharaoh said we could go, and then Pharaoh changed his mind. But don't you know that there's a few people that said, that Moses is a liar. He said we were leaving tonight. Pharaoh changed his mind, and now we're not going nowhere. And they had to endure ten plagues before they got to leave. How many times did they get disgruntled with their leadership? You know they did. How many times did Moses get frustrated being in the position that he was because it wasn't his decision, but it was his job to lead God's people? And, you know, Moses, he had to adjust to the leadership that he was under. He adjusted to his father-in-law, and he adjusted to Pharaoh. And then before long, God put him in charge. And now he's answering to God directly, which he was, but still, he still had to adjust to his leadership. And I was thinking about t today, this environment that we're in, just like those folks in Nevada, they don't have any choice. I mean, they could. They could go open their doors and, and start having church and, and defy the government order. But at what cost? What would... What are they going to gain by that? Just like the folks in California, the same thing. Uh, Sister Durham, your comments last weekend uh, requesting prayer for your, your mom and, and your father-in-law, that, that, hurt, that hurt me. It, it made me sad because there's so many people in our society today that ha are being denied the opportunity to worship the Lord. Aren't you thankful today for this house that we have in? Aren't you thankful for the order and the leadership that we've... Uh, worked through in the last six months here in this assembly. I, I'm privileged. I, I, I work for a company that, by the help and grace of the Lord, and the man I work for is a, is a Christian man. We've not, been, we've not had one uh, person miss work because of COVID. Not one. It's, there's no, there hasn't been any person directly uh, affected with the sickness in our employment. Now, we've had a few folks that have been exposed and this and that, and, and we've had to make a few adjustments, but we've not had to stop any production at all. None of our families have had to go without food or a paycheck. I'm really thankful for that. I get the feeling, it's my impression in this assembly, that all of us, so for the most part, have done very well, or at least we've been able to stay above water through this circumstance that we're in. Praise God. What a, what a great thing that is, that the Lord has shown favor to us as an assembly. And here we are, even in our assembly, and it, it grieves me to hear about different, one, different assemblies that are suffering with this. And, I, and I don't, I'm not saying that, that, it, that God is correcting them. I'm not suggesting that, so don't anybody take that from there. But what I am su suggesting to you is that as an assembly here, at 8101 Colonel Glenn Road in Little Rock, Arkansas, God has shown us favor. Praise God. And, it's, and largely, it's because of order. I was, uh, I want to read to you over in, uh, in Matthew, in the 8th chapter of Matthew. Uh, in the fifth verse. It says, When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a satyrian beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Now that should be enough. I'll say this, if 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 Jesus was here today, which, let me qualify that, I believe that he is with us. We're to be led by him. We can communicate with him through his spirit and his word, and through his ministry. And if we have a need today, you can call on the name of the Lord today. Let me, let me just back up a little bit here and say, if you have a need today, you can call on the name of the Lord today. You can petition him today. Don't 
Don't put shackles on the Lord. He can heal your body today. He can deliver your child. He can, he can bring healing in your home. He can, he can heal your circumstances, your finances, whatever the case may be. He is an on-time God. Hallelujah. And in this case, this man, Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. For me, that would have been enough. But this man's like, wait a minute. He said, that's not necessary. You don't have to come. The centurion answered him and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. What an act of humility. He said, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Notice this. This is authority working. He said, for I am a man. This man understands authority, and he's explaining, it. He's explaining to Jesus why he understands what's going to happen. Because he's also a man of authority. He said, I am a man under authority, having soldiers unto me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. So he understands that all Jesus has to say is be healed, and the Spirit of God will touch that servant that's sick of a palsy, and that servant will be healed. It's just a spoken word. Saints of God, there is power. There is power in the Word of God. There is power in the spoken word of God. Believe it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus heard it and he marveled and said to them that followed, he said, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. The faith that you are to have today is the faith in God's order, in his leadership. Put your confidence in God and his leadership. Praise God. If you turn over to... Uh, um, yes, sir. He was an officer in the Roman army. Okay. Thank you, Brother Smith. He was a Gentile, and Jesus still uh, had mercy on him and his servant. He understood order. Over in 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, the... Uh, he says here in the first verse, he said, The elders which are among you I exhort, who also am an elder, and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. He said, Feed the flock. He's given instructor to the instructions to the elders. He said, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Aren't you thankful today that we have leadership that they're not here to do it for money. They're not here to do it for financial gain or prestige or power. They're doing it because it's a willingness. They, they heard the call. Brother Smith heard the call and he answered that call. The leadership of the body of Christ has heard the call and they're answering the call of the Lord. They're serving God willingly, not for prestige or gain. He said, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Let me tell you something. If you come and, and tell me that, that we don't have good leadership in the body of Christ, you're mistaken. You, you're talking to the wrong person. Because I believe in the leadership of the body of Christ. I believe in the leadership of this church. In fact, I'm so convinced of the leadership right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. This is where I plan in my family. And I don't have any intention to plant them anywhere else by the help and grace of God. He said, Neither as being lords, but as examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And notice this next verse, and that's quite a promise. He said, Likewise, ye younger, and goes to Brother Smith's point today in Bible study about the crown of authority. He said, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the, other, unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. You know, it takes an humbleness to walk together. It certainly does. I was thinking today, I was reading this week, uh, and, and I was thinking about Brother Smith's Bible study Thursday night. When he closed, he mentioned pride. And I read, he was talking about the children of Israel, and said that every, everyone 
did, every man did that which is right in his own eyes. And it occurred to me that doing that which is right in your own eyes is an act of pride. It's an, act, it's an action of pride. When you do that which is right in your own eyes, you are acting in pride because you, you're operating that what you have is the best in your mind. In your own eyes, that's what's best and that's what you're doing. You're, you're operating in pride at that point. He said, Be ye clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. That's what we're all seeking today is God's favor. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that, ye may, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Of course, we know that the mighty hand of God is his ministry. And the, the operation of his ministry is for what? The saving of your soul. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because the adversary of the devil has a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Isn't it easy to get negative today? Isn't it easy to get wrapped up in all the drama and all the negativity and all the hatefulness and all the, the, the frustration and all the stuff that just goes back and forth and I said this and you said that and nah, nah, you know, and just on and on. Isn't it so easy to, be, to fall into that trap? Saints of God, I don't, want, I don't want that. I don't want my mind just to be a big cesspool of drama and confusion. I want my hope. I want my, my promise to be rested in the Lord. I want my spirit to be clothed in humility. I want to agree to walk with my brother. And I don't want anything to come between us. I don't want anything to separate us. I don't even want a whisper to separate me from you. But it will. Just like that. The Bible says that a whisper will separate the chief of friends. Hmm. Careful what you say. You might lose a good friend over it. Wouldn't want that. He said, Who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. In Hebrews, the 13th chapter, I want, to, I want to go through a few scriptures here, and I want to go back to Korah in a minute. He said in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, in the 15th verse, he said, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Did you know that there's times in your life when things are going terrible? When nothing's going your way, no answers are coming, the, the sky is falling, it's dark, it's gray. Did you know that those times in your life you have to offer a sacrifice of praise? That the sacrifice of praise be on your lips continually. Why? Because I am so blessed. God's so good to me. Woo! Hallelujah. He's so good to me. He's opened doors that I didn't know could be opened. He's healed me when I didn't know I could be healed. He's blessed me when I didn't even know I needed blessing. But, but there, was, there was a need coming and God made a way. He said, he said but to do good. Now, let's go back here. He said, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. Don't let that whisper be something hateful. Don't let that whisper be something negative. Don't let that whisper be condemnation and criticism. Lift up your brother. Lift up your sister. And if you can't do that, pray for them. The Bible says that we're even to pray for our enemies. He said... With such sacrifices, God is well pleased. You even have to offer a sacrifice of a kind word, of good communication. He said, obey them which hath a rule over you and submit yourself. We're back here in order again. Why? For they watch for your souls as they must give account 
that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. So, you know, I could use the illustration of my, my family, my home. It's my job. I, you know, I'm, I'm the head of the home, and so it's my job to make sure that we're safe. It's my job to make sure that we're fed. It's my job to make sure that we're provided for. It's my job to make sure that, that everything is, is set up properly, that we're in order, that we're going uh, to church and we're faithful, that we, have a, we can feel the Lord, a, a godly presence in our home, that I, I bear that burden. And, and, and it's my job to do that willingly, but, but if you make it hard on me to do my job, then there's not going to be any joy about it. In fact, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable. In fact, it's going to be so bad that something's going to change because this is my job to make sure this home is run correctly. So my kids, you know, I, they've understood for the most part. You know, Brother Daniels, I have to remind myself too. He said, submit yourself for they watch for your soul that they must give an account. He said in the 18th verse, he said, pray for us for we... Trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. I'm going to ask you this, and don't raise your hand, but I do want to ask you, I want you to ask yourself, did you pray for your, your president today? Did you pray for your president last week? How long has it been since you prayed for your president? How long has it been since you prayed for the governor of this state? How long has it been since you prayed for the mayor or the chief of police? How long has it been since you prayed for your boss on your job? How long has it been for, since you prayed for your pastor or the ministry? How long has it been as, since you've talked to God about the people who have the rule over you? See, it's not, it's not always about whether they like the job or whether they don't like the job. But it's their job. And if you're resisting leadership, then you're making their job a lot harder. And I'm going to tell you, saints of God, there's people in this city that will encourage you to resist leadership. And those people are working in error. In fact, they're working in iniquity. And if you're not careful, they'll drag you down with them. Condition yourself to work with the present day leadership. It's not perfect, not by any stretch of the imagination. Can you imagine working in leadership during the dark ages? I mean, how difficult would that have been? If you were, if, you know, let's take me for example. Let's say I was in a family that was a peasant family, living on a Lord's property where I couldn't shoot a bird, I couldn't shoot a deer, I couldn't even catch a fish out of the water to feed my family. The only thing I could eat was the stuff I could grow on the ground. I would have to work with that leadership. I thank God that God has provided a way in this great country that we have, that he's made freedom available to us, that we can work and labor, and, and you know, as the Constitution says, for the pursuit of happiness. I'm thankful for all those things. But there's no guarantee that we're always going to have that. In fact, the people in Nevada don't have that today. We have to learn to adjust and trust God that He is going to lead us and give us good leadership. And if you're not praying for your leadership, I implore you to start today. Praise God. He says that they can... Pray for us, for we trust that we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. I'll try to wrap it up here, but let's go to the 16th chapter of, of Numbers. See, it's easy. It's easy for us to think that, well, God's blessing me too. In the 16th chapter of Numbers, it said, Now Korah, in the first verse, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi. He was a Levi. He was a, he was a son of the tribe of Levi. So he had some credentials behind his name. He was in the priestly 
family, if you will. And Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, and the sons of Reuben, took men, and they arose, and they rose up before Moses. This is after the children of Israel had left Egypt. They, they had already been through Pharaoh. They had already been through the plagues. He said, they rose up and took 250 princes of the, of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. That would have been hard to resist. Can you imagine? I mean, that would have been... That would have been hard for Moses to resist. Men of renown, famous men, 250 princes. And they stood up and they, they gathered themselves together against Moses and Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Every one of them, and the Lord is among them. See, that's what people will do. They'll say, well, you're, you're godly. Don't you have the Spirit of God in your life? You've been in a body of Christ for 40 years. You've got the Word of God in your life. That's what Korah, Dathan, and Abiram did. They said, well, we're all holy. We've, all, we're, we've got God in our life. We're just as good as you, Moses. Why should we follow you? I'll tell you why they should follow Moses. Because God called Moses. He didn't call Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. He said, and they gathered themselves against Moses and Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. He said, they said, Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. You know, I can imagine to an extent the, the frustration, the anguish that Moses experienced right there because he was called to do a job that was above his pay grade. Can I say it like that? That's not condescending. God asked Moses to do something that had never been done before. Did you know it's not going to be easy for us to understand leadership? Because if leadership thinks like I do, then they're not really leaders. Leadership, as Brother Smith has said, is a step ahead. They're, they're, they're further down the road than I am. They're thinking about things beyond what I'm thinking about, and that's why they're in leadership. Moses here, he was working and operating under God's unction and God's motivation that, that Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, they didn't have a clue what was going on. But they thought they did. In the, in the eighth verse, of number 16, and Moses said unto Corey, he said, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seeing seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle. So Moses was reminding them, Look, God lifted up your family, the Levites. God lifted them up and put them to do service in the, in the, in the congregation, in the temple for the congregation of Israel. They held a, a, a place of authority. You know, if I'm not careful, I'll, I'll take that in myself. Well, you know who, you know, this is me, and, you know, I've got this place, and, you know, I think it should be thus and so. If I'm not careful, I'll find myself out of order. He said, and he brought thee near to him and all the brethren, uh, brethren, the sons of Levi with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also. For which cause both thou and thy company is gathered, are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call, and Moses then sent to call Dathan, Abiram, and the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come. They wouldn't humble themselves. They wouldn't agree to walk together. It's not a mystery. Leadership and order is not a mystery. But it's not necessarily easy either. But it's necessary. The key for me in working in order starts with humility. And that'll be your key too. It's the key for my wife and I to be able to, to exist together and marry been for, to be married for 25 years. It's the key for my wife and I to work with our children in our home. It's the key for me to work on the job. I've worked, on, I've worked for Drew Lafferty for almost 19, for going on 19 years. 
I've worked with Brother Smith. You've been here 12 years. That's right. It's a decision that I make. It's a decision you have to make to work with humility, to walk in humility. But it's not easy. It's not always easy. In the, in the second chapter of Galatians, in the 11th verse, just want to touch here, said when Peter was come to, to Antioch, this is Paul talking, he said, I withstood him to his face for he was to be blamed. Here you've got two great apostles, Paul and Peter, with a disagreement. A massive disagreement. But if you, if you go to the ninth chapter of Acts, when Paul first got saved, when he first got converted to Christianity, in the 26th verse of Acts 9, it said, When Paul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed, him, he, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. Paul was a, he was a well-learned man. He was, the Bible says that he said he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. There wasn't anybody who knew more about the Word of God than the Apostle Paul among the disciples, in my estimation. Don't you know it was difficult for him to humble himself to Peter, a fisherman? Think about that, Brother Daniels. Here, Peter was a fisherman. He wasn't a learned man of the Word of God. He, wasn't, he didn't study at the feet of the elders. He didn't, he didn't have all that book knowledge. He was a fisherman. The Bible says that he was a chief apostle. The apostle Paul had to humble himself under the leadership of that day even though he probably knew more about the Word of God than Peter did. I'd like to follow Paul's example, wouldn't you? It doesn't matter so much. Knowledge isn't nearly as great as charity. In fact, the Bible says that knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifies. He said... Uh, he assayed him to join himself to the disciples, but they were afraid of him. They, they were very afraid of Paul. But he did it anyway. In the first chapter of Galatians, it says here that in the 13th verse, it said that you heard of my conversation in the past in the Jews' religion. This is the Apostle Paul talking. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God. That's why they were afraid of Paul and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. But when it pleased God to separate me from my mother's womb and call me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with the flesh and blood, neither went I up to, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went unto Arabia, and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. Paul humbled himself with Peter. He submitted to him. Peter, he, he struggled with Paul. See, working with leadership is not easy, but it's necessary. And I'll say this. It takes great men to work with great men. You're working in order today. You're exceeding and excelling above your above many others. Consider that. If you're working in order today, you're exceeding and excelling above many others. Don't let anybody diminish you. Don't let anybody uh, make you feel less because you're working in order. Don't let anybody make you feel intimidated or, or second class because you're willing to humble yourself and work in order. Because I'm going to tell you, that is where the blessings come. It takes great people 
to work with great leadership. Praise God. I feel like I'm among the greatest. I'm so happy to be a part of this church in Little Rock, Arkansas. I truly am. In the second chapter of Peter, or second Peter of the third chapter in the 13th verse, he said, Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Second Peter 3 verse 14. He said, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found in peace without spot and blameless. Saints of God, I'm telling you today, and I can't stress it enough, humility is your key to working in order to being found at peace without spot and blameless. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved Paul, brother Paul, who according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. See, Peter struggled. He's struggling right now. He's struggling to understand Paul's wisdom because God didn't give it to Peter. He gave it to Paul. So now what's happened? Peter's having to submit to what? The leadership of the day. It doesn't all, it's not always fluid, and it's not always set in stone. That's why he said, younger, submit yourself to the older. Older, submit yourself to the younger. Likewise, every one of you, submit yourself to each other. He said, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, Beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory now and forever. Amen. What Peter was saying there is that even the, the epistles of the Apostle Paul were hard. They were hard for him to understand. See, it's really not fair. It's not fair for somebody to to take a leader and, and just belittle them and besmirch them and just speak evil of dignitaries and just continue down that path. There's no righteousness in that. There's no honor in that. Leadership, as we see it in the Word of God, is there for our good. It's there to save us from ourselves, to save us from sin, to give us direction, to lead us into the pathways of righteousness. It's not always easy to understand. It wasn't easy for a great apostle like Peter to understand the apostle Paul, but it was necessary. It was necessary for Peter to humble himself and submit to Paul's words. Saints of God, it's necessary for you and me to submit ourselves to the leadership of the day. Submit ourselves to them that have to rule over us. Why? Because they watch for our soul. You can go anywhere in this great world and you won't find a government that gives more and does more for its people than what you'll find right here in the United States of America. You simply won't. It doesn't exist. I caution you, be careful how you speak about dignitaries because it bleeds over. You say, well, you know, Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, this or that, socialist, whatever. The way you talk about leadership on your job, in your home, in your politics, it bleeds over. It affects how you work in order. And if we're not careful, saints of God, we'll find ourselves on the outside looking in and wondering what happened. Why? Because a root of bitterness sprung up in our heart. And then it began to grow and overtook 
that joy and that happiness and that peace of mind that the Lord gave us and will give us even today. Praise God.
appreciated the service today, Brother Painter's good words. There's, uh, I, 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 I don't want to say just a mint, just a smidgen here, but it's just too good not to say it while it's on our minds about Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. You know, the Lord told them and the congregation. He said, if, if they die a natural death and go the way of all other men, then you'll know that I'm not the man of God that I've told you I, that God called me to do what I've done. And the Lord, uh, he said, if the Lord opens up the ground, though, and swallows them up, then you're going to know that I'm the true man of God. And the ground opened up right then and swallowed every one of them up, their whole household, their, everything about them, everything they was connected to, and swallowed them up. And what that's a picture of is people who don't and rise up against authority, God swallows them up in a pit, which is Babylon. That's what it is. They, they get swallowed up. And God rejects them. And... And then the people they had influence over. Did you, can you believe after that happened? The next day, the people of God came to Moses and said, You killed God's people. <laughs> and Moses, a plague started killing the people. And Moses sent Aaron to gather coals off the fire and offer up incense and offer up... Uh, atonement for them to forgive them but before they could get it done 14,700 people died that day for rising up against Moses that was the people that that were influenced by Cord, Dathan and Abiram can you imagine that oh God but I loved Moses' spirit that he he pled with Cord, Dathan and Abiram first and he pled with the you know, with God to forgive them. You know, he, he was a man after God's own heart. He wanted to see people saved. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. Um, these are messages that are necessary, but they're, they're, not, they're not easy to swallow all the time. But they're still the truth of the Word of God, and I appreciate it. I appreciate Brother Painter's words. Um, we need to have a work day. Uh, if we could have one next Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning, those of you that can, we, we, it's going to be hot. We need to start early, and so we don't have to work for just a few hours. But we've got several things we need to do. Also, I don't know how many of you have noticed it, but the, the dining room flooring, the tile, it's come up in several places. It's very loose. And it's just in, well, it's the original tile, you know, since 1984, five when we first, when we first built this. So what's that, 35 years? Anyway, we have found tile that we, we can get at a real good wholesale price that never has to be waxed. And it's a, it's a really a nice tile. It's uh, light in color. It's really white, but it's got a lot of speckles in it where it doesn't show dirt. Or it's a creamy white. I don't know what to call it. Anyway, be praying because uh, we're going to need to take up a, a pledge, I think, for to help with the expense of it. But it's not that it's not that too big of a deal. I think we can easily do it. But, but just be praying what the Lord might, would want you to give in our pledges. But anyway, we need to have a work day Saturday and get a few things done around here that needs to be done. And so if those of you that can be here, well, we need your help. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a praise before we go home. Dear God, thank you for your goodness, Jesus, for your many blessings. Oh, God, oh, Lamb of God.